Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. When you're trying to follow the three rules of unit testing, number one is create functions to take inputs. Number two is those functions should return an output based on that input. And number three is don't test what you don't own. Now, when you're writing network-based applications, you don't actually own probably a lot of the libraries that do those network requests. And the worst thing that happens is that when you run these unit tests, they work and then, but they're kind of slow. And then you turn off wireless and they don't work, but they're really fast. And the reason for that is either A, you're not mocking them or stubbing them or putting fixtures in place of what they would normally do. But second, you're actually violating that third rule of testing something that you don't actually own, doing integration tests at the same time. So today we're gonna to teach you the very specific on how do you prevent that from happening? How do you not violate that third rule? And how do you mock those third party dependencies? We're gonna show you the three ways that you can do that today to make sure that when you run your unit test, they work whether wireless is on or not. And you can make sure that those network requests don't slow down your test and you're just doing unit tests, not actual integration and you're not violating that third rule of how do I I don't want to test what I don't want. I've got a program here command line written in node that gets the weather for whatever city and state you plug in for example I can type in node index.js to run it but I can pass it a parameter in this case city of Richmond that's where I live what it'll do is it'll go on the internet load the weather for that particular city and state and it says right now it's 84 which is around 20 degrees celsius very sunny a few clouds but i've been outside it's mostly blue beautiful day but unit testing this we're just going to unit test to get weather and i'm going to show you what happens when you violate rule three and you accidentally turn a unit test into an integration test a reminder rule three is don't test what you don't own we don't own actually inside of get weather the request module. So if you go to the top here, this request module allows you to do AJAX calls in Node. It's very similar to the Fetch API or jQuery's AJAX API in the browser. It has a bunch of wonderful methods, specifically around Git. You can pass a URL into it, and it'll give you the error if it failed. Otherwise, it'll give you the request that it issued. It attempts to give you the body back. It could be a JSON object, XML string, whatever. It supports promises, but I'm returning it as a callback just to show you an example way of doing that. The downside is that this get weather function that we expose in no way gives us access to this. So that doesn't seem like a problem. It makes the get weather very simple. It looks like a pure function, but watch what happens. We're gonna run npm run test or npm test, either one. Two things I want you to notice. The first is that it takes 110 milliseconds. That's pretty slow for node code. So something strange is going on, but watch this. We're gonna turn off wireless rerun the unit test without changing anything and suddenly it fails because of basically it just doesn't have internet. That's what all this crazy stuff means. So suddenly unit tests are supposed to test if it always works or not in its determined way. Now you have unit tests that sometimes work to test something always works. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so it basically means your unit test non-deterministic and it's not their fault, but basically something outside of their world, the side effect of not being 100% functional did it. We're gonna turn wireless back on. I'm gonna show you the first way to actually test these things. We're gonna use something called Sheena. So we're gonna import, I've called it Sinan in the past, but it's apparently pronounced Sheenon. So we'll import Sheenon. Now every unit test inside of Mocha has the ability to run a before each and after each. These functions will run in the before each before every single it. So if you have 50 its, this will run before each and every one. Additionally, we're gonna do an after each. When you use something like Sheenon or any other library that mutates state, what Sheenon does will actually overwrite an object. So to give an example, we'll go in node. So we have this awesome, awesome object and it has our get property. And this function currently will just print out, oh, I get stuff, bro. And that's all it does. It's just a login function that logs things. When we print out this awesome object, it has this function, this get function. And we can call this get function. And it does that. It actually logs that out, returns no value. What happens if we want to modify that to not actually log, but to do nothing or perhaps log something different? Now, let's say we wanted to modify it, but we wanted to keep the ability to put it back later. So we're gonna create a storage mechanism. Now this could be on the object, this could be a completely different place, this could be a global variable, it doesn't matter where you store it. The point is, is that you can change things at runtime and then change them back. So we're gonna say old get here, this brand new variable, we're gonna equal to get. So when we log out awesome, you can see it actually has a get and this is a reference to this guy, okay? So watch this, we're gonna go awesome get, right? We call it, does that. But what if we overwrite it to do something different? Say console log, I'm different. 
Yes, Jesse, you are very different. So we have awesome Git now, but it's different. It now prints out that. So how do we get that back? Well, the way we get it back is we use the reference that we had, which is old Git. Now when we call awesome Git, it does the old stuff that it used to do. And if we want to clean up our mess, we can delete old Git. And we got the awesome with just the Git method back the way it was. So that's effectively what Sheenon does when you test things in the before each and after each. So let's go show you how to do that. Inside of this get weather, we want this request to actually be faked or mocked or stubbed, however you want to call it. And what that means is, is that it'll, it won't really run this git code inside this git node modules that if you look at the request module and it has a ton of code for git, instead, it's just going to run a function that we make up that does something silly and that's automatically returned data. So that way, when this function runs, two things happen. Number one, we've removed the real request object. We're going to use a fake one. And second, it's not really going to go to the server. It's just going to call a function. So we're going to mock it away. Sheenon, which is up top, and it has this ability called stubs. So you can create stubs on anything. So we've got to import the request object first to mutate it. So we're going to report require request. And we're going to say, hey, that's a git method. I want you to override that, our own little thing. So in this case, we're going to have it yields or yields. It's I before E, Jesse. Yields call the callback, but it's going to do it in such a way that is always true. So we're going to make it deterministic. We mean we, we always know exactly what's going to happen. It's always going to call the callback with undefined, which means no error. We're going to fake the response because nobody cares. And the body is going to be a stringified object that matches this guy. So we'll create an object and it has a main property and that main property should have an object that has a temp property and we could just say 21 degrees Celsius for example. Okay. So this will be a basic stub which just mean that anybody in their mom who uses the request objects get function anywhere is going to get this instead when they call get. So to return this instead. But we've actually modified request so not to affect other things beside us, we want to keep it reasonably pure. So we have to actually go to that object that we modified. This is no longer the request get method is now Sheenon. So what we're going to do is, co is call the restore. And what that does is it changes it back to the way it was. Very similar to the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts where you create a campfire and you clean up your mess and campsite afterwards, leave it like you were never there, better than you found it. We're going to do the exact same here. So after we run our unit test, we're going to clean up our mess and request that get is going to turn back into whatever it is in here in this big list of code that you know request has. So now when we run it, let's run our test again, npm test. It works. You'll notice that's a lot faster now. 13 milliseconds. It's a lot faster. Let's run it a couple times. Make sure it's good. Okay. 11 milliseconds. Now we're going to turn wireless off. When we rerun it, you'll notice it still works and it's still fast. So it's deterministic. We've mocked away what we don't test. And that's how you use Sheenon to do it.